Jacob Failer here with Primal Racing. I'm doing a uh, Falcon transmission rebuild with the clutch discs and everything. I didn't find any videos for this online, so figured I would give it a shot and uh, try to make you guys a video step by step. Uh, I've already got a couple steps done here. First thing you're going to want to do is loosen this and take this out. I'm about to do that. It's a 9 16 uh, wrench here. And, uh, and then take the side cover off with these bolts here. These are half inch. <clears throat> when you take that off, these springs and these balls are detent balls, detent springs. They're right here in these two holes. You got to take those out. Don't lose those. Those hold the shift shaft. They help uh, line up the shift shaft when you're shifting. All right, I got the detent spring and the detent ball out of the top adjuster. Uh, it's a 3 16 Allen wrench, 9 16 wrench. And um, I had to just uh, plug this hole and then blow in this hole to get that one out. I don't have a small enough magnet. I have a magnet, but it's not small enough to get in there. So you can get that out of there like that. All right, the next step is to remove these retaining screws on the shift forks. Uh, this one is a 1 8 Allen wrench. I already removed that one. I put some marks on here just in case, but uh, this this uh, retaining shoe screw hole looks different, so that's where it goes. Uh, so you don't need to make marks. You'll know where that goes when you reassemble. Uh, this one is actually a 5 32nd, so I'm going to remove that one now. Those are retaining uh, pins. Is that what they're called? Retaining screws, they're uh, they're really tight, so I used the Ugga Dugga, get it out of their cheap Ryobi one, but uh, but they're they're really tight. So just a word to the wise. All right, after you get those pins out, you can remove the shifting shift shafts, reverse, and then high and low. Just gotta work it out, and then there's between here. There's a pin that's between there. It's called the shuttle pin. I've seen a diagram there between between the shafts. You got to get that out. So that's next. You can now just remove the shift forks. They just come right out. They slide right out. I've just been wiping them down. And then I, I put the retaining screw back into it so I don't lose it. There's a shuttle pin that comes out of there. It comes out pretty easy. I just used the Allen, Allen wrench just to kind of coax it through there and then it slid out all right it looks like the next step is you remove the real rear tail shaft bolts uh, there's five of them right here they're five eighths once you got those bolts out of there this tail shaft it's just gonna uh, it's not very easy and especially doing it one-handed here but it's gonna come apart <clears throat> there's three pins right there i already took one of them out uh that are to help line it up <clears throat> there you go comes apart on the tail housing here pretty cool design the tail shaft is going to stay in there and it has some play so that you don't you know when you're racing it's not too rigid but there's uh, needle bearings in here on the inside because this shaft that's this shaft um, I don't know what it's called, but uh, that goes inside this part. So check these needle bearings. Make sure they're not worn out or flat. And then the, you got this bearing right here as well, retaining bearing. <clears throat> Make sure those are all good. All right, I had a, bit, a little bit of cleanup because uh, some of the excess um, training fluid that didn't drain out. Uh, it's still trapped in there, so when you remove the tail housing, uh, so a lot of it leaks out, and that's why I'm using this cardboard under here. Uh, the next step is to re remove this high-low um, gear, slider gear. It comes out really easy. Uh, the, the shift fork goes down, so we'll remember that when we uh, reinstall it later. The next step, they want you to remove this um, seal plate. I already did that earlier. So remove that, and then the next step is going to be to remove that reverse shaft. I just uh, started tapping on it a little bit with an uh, extension. It's It doesn't take much force at all. That's going to come out next. 
So just keep tapping that. The reverse shaft it comes right out. You should be you, once you can grab it, you should be able to pull it on, pull it on out, and then the reverse gear comes right out. Same thing and spec the needle bearings and your teeth. I'm gonna clean it up a little bit. There's always a point when you're doing something yourself where you come across the hardest part, and so far this has been the hardest part. This is the uh, main shaft here. It's it's basically pressed in, quote unquote, because you uh, when you're assembling it, you hammer it into there, uh, so it's a tight fit. So it's kind of pressed into the case right there. So it doesn't want to come out very easily, and uh, you don't want to damage it. So this is what I did. I just blocked it up on two by fours, and then I put this. <clears throat> two by four on the end of it and then I I try to rubber mallet but it just doesn't hit hard enough so <clears throat> I was really careful and used a three pound small hammer and uh was able to get it out it just falls right out of there and uh on to the next so I was just cleaning up the roller bearing and uh, the whole thing really on this main drive flange I guess you call it let me see Yeah, just main drive assembly. So it has this roller bearing in here. I just made sure I didn't have any play in this thing after, uh, you know, hammering on it because it just slides this out of the this the case here. So that's all good. Uh, some of the kits come with bearings. The kit that I got just ha uh, has the clutches and uh, a few gaskets and a few seals. So uh, just want to let you know just... Because this is so tight and it's going to be hard to get it out of there, just check these bearings. Make sure you're there. Uh, you don't have any play vertically. Uh, the next step is this cluster shaft. Uh, same as the re reverse shaft. It's just I just used a... Uh, uh, you can use a punch. I just use this extension and a small hammer. Just tap it lightly in the hole here. Start pushing it out. and We'll get this and then it'll just pull right out of here. After you remove the cluster shaft, this is the cluster where your clutch packs are. It's the last step in the case. I'm using the assembly guide, just going in reverse. So these are thrust, thrust assembly. What do they call this? Thrust washer pack. So it's just a washer and then needle bearings and then another washer on the front. On the back, you got two washers and then a needle bearing and then a washer. And then the rest of the assembly in there. So it just all, uh, you just want to take good inventory of what you have and make sure it's all there. All right, here's the uh, clutch assembly uh, shaft pack. And uh, this is the business end of everything. So once you take this apart, you know, there's already a plate there on that. But this is where your clutch discs are. These actually aren't in too bad a shape. But there's the pack inside there that you'll be replacing. Alright, took it apart a little bit, cleaned it up a little bit. Gonna definitely clean <clears throat> everything up and uh, carb clean everything and wipe it all down. This clutch pack is a little bit different than the one that I got. These are a little bit thicker. Um, just to note, there's also a spring and another thrust washer pack in here. I'm just leaving it together so I remember, even though it's all in a diagram. This is the front of the cluster, just the front gear and the pressure plate. going to clean all that up. <clears throat> and uh, I'm going to mic the... Uh, the new clutch pack that I have versus this one. And I might even call Winters and see what's up. Got everything cleaned up. Uh, assembled the new clutch pack. Right there you'll see it's all in there. You just kind of turn this as you put that on there. And it'll all line back up. Uh, you just follow this diagram for clutch packs. You, you um, put the pressure plate first. And then disc and then a plate and then a disc and a plate. You just alternate. 
and then uh, these roller bearings and the spacers are all going to go in here. It just says to use like an assembly shaft. I didn't have anything one inch, but I found this uh, small wood dowel that uh, will fit the bill and hold it together. Okay, I installed the thrust washer pack on the front side. That's the front that's down now. So now I'm doing the rear side. The front is pretty easy. It's just flat. The back has a recess, as you can see right there, where the washers go in. So you just uh, reach in here with your hand, push this down to push the spring. There's not much play. Then you slide one of these washers in at a time, and you follow this guide right here. It goes uh, thick washer, and then the needle bearing, and then a thin washer, and then the thick washer. Okay, so the instructions say that you should... Install the front thrust bearing and then put the shaft in and then put the rears in. You collapse the clutch spring in order to get these into that recessed area that I was showing you. Well, that wasn't possible for me. There was not enough room to compress that down. So I just uh, removed the assembly shaft and I just very carefully put it on its side and I moved, I moved it over enough that... I could get into that recessed area with the washers and I got it in there and then so now the next step is to install this assembly the actual shaft and you just make sure everything is lined up well and if you uh, see that it's not you just uh, grab in here on the cluster and rotate it a little bit and you should be able to get it to line up all right one thing I forgot to mention about the cluster shaft so there's an o-ring on here that comes with the kit you want to replace that to make sure it doesn't leak and the assembly guide asks for some uh, petroleum jelly on there to help seal that up so I'm going to put that on there and finish installing it. The other thing I forgot to uh, mention was that the kit also comes with um, these seals and other seals and this transmission doesn't have very many races on it so I'm just going to leave those because they look perfect and uh, they don't look stressed or uh, stretched or anything so I think they're good to go. The next step is to install this reverse gear. You want to make sure the smaller side is to the back. You just put it in here. It'll actually go on that other cluster in there. It'll line up. And then uh, this is the reverse shaft hole. You, uh, you want to change this O-ring that comes with a kit. And then I already did that. And then you want to put some petroleum jelly on here to help it seal up. And that's uh, going to go in that hole. And... And it should tap in real light. I didn't really tap that reverse shaft in. I twisted it while pushing it. And then I also was turning the reverse gear as you go. To uh, help seat it on the needle bearings. Just to get it lined up there. Make sure it goes in the back side real good. And, and uh, But I wouldn't tap it. unless uh, Because it's, it's binding. But if you turn it and it has a little bit of... Um, <clears throat> transmission fluid on there goes in real easy the next step is the front seal plate you get a new uh, big o-ring here again you're supposed to lube it with uh, Vaseline I got it in there uh, one tip is as you're working it on if you use your fingers then it rolls and then when you get it in the slot it rolls back out so if you use like a small screwdriver and uh, hold it and then use a screwdriver in the center and then work your fingers. It, it won't roll and then it will stay in there and won't roll back out. And then uh, and then these bolts, looks like they used red Loctite. I'm just going to use blue Loctite. It's plenty strong enough and um, the torque that these are under or, or the forces aren't going to work that out. Uh, so as long as you're using some kind of Loctite thread sealant, it says to uh, torque them to 13 to 15 pounds. And then also you want to make sure this drain hole gets to uh, where this is on here when you're lining that up and you'll be good to go. A couple more things about this plate and the bolts. I did clean off the bolts with a uh, brass wire brush they, to get that red stuff off of there. I used Loctite and silicone because this does go all the way through into the case. So I just used uh, silicone on the top end and then uh, just a a drop of Loctite. I don't want these coming out. I don't want it leaking. So I, uh, it might be overkill. Let me know in the comments if that's crazy. But I know Loctite 
Uh, a lot of times it will seal it up, but I didn't want to take any chances. I uh, hate when these are leaking, like I said. And then the other thing, when you're putting this plate on here, you do have to stretch this seal just a tad to get over here. So don't muscle it on there. Just uh, use your screwdriver if you need to uh, and get it over these splines and it'll go on easy. Next, you install this low high slider gear. It slides right on. You make sure the, the shifter fork groove is to the bottom. I couldn't do it with one hand, so I had to pause there. But you just line it up, goes right on. And then uh and then everything will turn. It's kind of it's resting on the end so it's not turning freely, but it does turn freely. Next you install these three pins and these three little holes. Uh one side of this is a little more uh rounded than the other. I'm putting the rounded side up so that it's easier to uh, mount the tail shaft so the tail housing has this gasket we're going to be replacing this you remove this this piston is well actually so this thrust washer is on the outside of this you take that out and then i just uh squirted some uh carb cleaner in here to shoot this piston out and then there's an o-ring behind there going to replace this o-ring and then put the piston back and the thrust washer and then the gasket and then and then I could put the tail housing on. All right, I got that together, tail housing on. <clears throat> I used a small, very, very small paper thin layer of uh, silicone on both sides of this gasket because uh, this does tend to leak around here. So I don't want it to leak like I mentioned earlier and then um, because you don't want that thrust washer that's in this housing to fall out, the round part we were just talking about, <clears throat> you just kind of lean this on its side and then you push it together from the right and the left instead of pushing it down on top. And you can turn this shaft a little bit to help you uh, mount it on there and it goes on real easy. <clears throat> All right, the guide asks for 30 to 35 pounds of torque on the tail shaft bolts. So that's done. All right, so you're on to the... <clears throat> shifter rods i mark them with uh top and bottom so i wouldn't get confused when i put them back in just to make sure and double check i put them in the right spot you need to put the sh shuttle pin in first between the shifter rods then put the shifter rods in and as you're putting the shifter rods in then you install the shifter forks into the one goes into this slot right here one goes into this slot right here and then after you get all those in there, you can put your springs and indent balls into these two holes. And then uh, you'll put the cover on and bolt those. Should be good to go. So I got the shuttle pin in there. I just used a small screwdriver just to push in this hole here and line it up in the center there. Shifting forks. The I put reverse in first and then I'm going to slide this rod all the way in and then... Uh, High and low goes, like I said, on here. Just you want to make sure this is to the left and this is to the right. Or to, this is to the front and this is to the back. The reverse goes to the back, the bottom or the top. And it depends on the way you're aligned. Um, but, and then uh, don't forget to torque these uh, Allen head set screws down. All right, time to put the side plate on. <clears throat> These three bolts are the only ones that go all the way through the housing. So these are the only bolts you need to silicone. The rest, I probably might put a little silicone just to make sure they don't work their way out or, or Loctite. But probably okay with just uh, torquing them down or just tightening them down. Make sure you put your, again, indent balls and springs in right here. The two holes and should be good to go. All right, the last step after you get the side plate on and the plug is to put the last detent ball detent spring and the adjuster here and it says factory setting is half and half a turn off the bottom so i just ran it down in adjusted it half inch off of or half a turn not half inch off of the bottom and then i'll i'll adjust it here at the shop later all right so that's it falcon uh transmission rebuild Hope that helps some guys out. The uh, The guide is pretty useful, but I know sometimes it's really good just to see a video of it. Um, 
so thanks again thanks for watching if you learned something or that helped you out please like and subscribe and we'll see you at the track soon